Hi, welcome back. This is part three of three. Um, this is for bradycardia and the heart blocks. Let's get started. So we're going to treat symptomatic bradycardia. We just went over second degree type two and third degree heart block. Those are the patients that are at risk for becoming symptomatic with their bradycardia. In part one, we did talk about first degree and secondary type 1. Those patients are usually pretty lucky. Their um, MI doesn't usually extend more. They usually remain stable and they do not become symptomatic where we have to treat them. But secondary type 2 and third degree, we're going to be ready to treat these patients at every minute because they will become unstable perhaps from their symptoms. So for second degree type 2, and third degree heart block, we're going to remember a little mnemonic. Bradycardia always takes down everyone. So always takes down everyone. So that's A is for atropine, T is for transcutaneous pacemaker, D is for dopamine infusion, and E is for an epi infusion. So bradycardia always takes down everyone. A-T-D-E, atropine, TCP, dopamine infusion, and epi infusion. You'll find this on the um, ACLS study guide from michellekunz.com, that's with one L. So the treatments. Now the basic treatment for bradycardia is atropine. The dose for atropine recommended by American Heart Association is 0 0.5 milligrams every three to five minutes and the max is three milligrams. If that does not help this patient with their symptoms, we definitely need a transcutaneous pacemaker. And if your patient is in a third degree heart block, it's the transcutaneous pacemaker that you want to go to right away. And hopefully you can have the pads placed on the patient and turn the pacemaker on. Now, the pacemaker is the definitive treatment for third degree heart block. But we want to remember that bradycardia always takes down everyone. So we'll include atropine, so we can remember it. Remember, 0 0.5 milligrams every three to five minutes. Then we need the transcutaneous pacemaker, which might mean a transvenous pacemaker later on that day for that patient. And that patient might actually need a permanent pacemaker. But we got atropine. We got the TCP. If the blood pressure is dropping, probably the most common infusion we hang up for hypotension is dopamine. Dopamine runs by microgram per kilogram per minute. If you remember, low dose dopamine is 2 to 5 micrograms per kilogram per minute. We call it mics per kilogram per minute. But low dose dopamine causes vasodilation. They usually use that on renal patients. But here we need vasoconstriction. Dopamine at a higher rate, 5 micrograms per kilogram per minute, up to 20 or sometimes even higher, is what will give us vasoconstriction. So 5 to 10 or 20 micrograms per kilogram per minute, dopamine infusion will help with vasoconstriction as well as increasing your heart rate. So we got atropine. We got the transcutaneous pacemaker. We have a dopamine infusion, and hopefully the patient will stabilize, because if not, we'll have to hang up an epinephrine infusion. So epi infusion at a 2 to 10 microgram per minute drip. So bradycardia always takes down everyone. Atropine, TCP, dopamine infusion, and an epinephrine infusion. So that will help us treat a symptomatic bradycardia, and primarily we're speaking about secondary type 2 and third degree heart block patients. So I hope that helps you in remembering the treatments for symptomatic bradycardia. And if you have any questions at any time, you can contact me through michellekunz.com and email me. Or if you get my phone number from the web website, or if you're in one of my classes, um, you probably have my phone number already, or ask me in class, and I hope um, I can get you the information right away, 
or you can get it right off of the study guides, the zombie notes. So thank you for your time. I hope you find that helpful.